Uh, my name is Vera, and I'm from North Carolina State University. I'm a rising junior in electrical and computer engineering and applied mathematics. And my name is John Ravi, and I did my undergrad at NC State University. I just started my PhD in January, also at NC State, and I'm majoring in computer engineering. My focus is computer architecture and operating systems. So we're going to talk about um, SE. 19 or supercomputing and how the student cluster competition is one of the programs in there and we'll also talk about how we are we started a team to compete in there and the stuff that we're doing uh, both hardware and software and how that relates to CentOS. So what is supercomputing also known as SC? Uh, the SC conference series has been going around ever since 1980s about and it's also known as the International Conference for High Performance Computer and Networking, Storage and Analysis. And SC conference series are known for uh, providing technical programs such as keynote speakers, panels, papers, invited talks, posters, exhibits, and many student programs and SINET. And John is more familiar with SINET, but... Basically SINET is um, there, there to uh, put together the fastest internet uh, connection for like a week at a time in the world um, and they sometimes take, take a year to plan and what week to build, like week before the conference starts, and they to tear it down. So it's a lot of work um, to do that and sometimes even students get to help out and learn about how that works. And just a little fun fact, it can, apparently Simon can download Netflix's entire library in less than 45 seconds. So. And we've got some uh, student programs at the SC conference series, such as Computing for Change. Students uh, work on a, a social problem and try to apply their HPC skills to come up with possible solutions to for those uh, social problems. And there are many job fairs, men mentor programs, student volunteers, student cluster competition, which we will be presenting today and ACM re student research competition experiencing HPC for undergraduate students. Um, for me, uh, I was able to get exposed to the field through the experiencing HPC for undergraduates program. As a freshman when I first applied and got into the program um, during my sophomore year, I was one of the 20 students from all around the world and uh, the purpose of the program was to expose students who's never uh, been into or who doesn't know anything about the HPC field. And uh, they've had small talks, they brought many people from the industry to give, give talks, and um, we have lectures, and I had a mentor from Samsung and he was able to tell me more about the conference and I still talk to him up to this date. And that was my experience and it's for John's experience. I got involved in SC through the Student Volunteers Program. Um, my first year going to SC was 2017 as a junior in an undergrad, and I learned about the student cluster competition um, during the first transition there. And last year, I also um, participated in the student research competition. Basically, this was like a research poster session, um, and if you're one of the top three uh, finalists, you had to give a presentation to a crowd. Um, so I finished uh, semifinals there. Um, and presenting in a poster, I met uh, Vera, uh, she saw my name in one of the posters and reached out to me and said, are you interested in starting a uh, team uh, to participate in there? Um, and I was I just finished my undergrad, so I'm, only undergrads can participate in student cluster competition, um, but grad students can help out as advisors. So that's my role um, for the team. And, and just some fun facts about our team is that uh, this is our first time uh, putting a team together, so we formed NC State's first team for the first time in the history. And we're the first public school from the state of North Carolina and second school from the state of North Carolina. Unfortunately, we forced university kind of beat us to it, but it's fine. Uh, we have about four advisors and we are working with Cisco. They're providing us the hardware that we need to be able to participate in this com competition. And just a little bit about the student cluster competition. It was developed in 2007 to expose more undergraduate students to the high performance computing field just because, because of the fact that it's a really hard field for undergraduate students to dive right into. Um, they came up with this program. So they what they do is they choose about 15 to 16 teams every year from all around the world. And they um, make 
um, teams build their own cluster and run certain applications that the SEC committee come up, comes up with, and they apply their own optimization techniques and, and while learning more about their architecture and um, and they like learn more about it, and in the following years they improve and they come back again and participate again. This year we have 15 teams participating, and we happen to be one of them. And there's a lot, of, a lot of coursework in undergrad curriculum at NC State, even um, in the EC department. We don't have any classes that are related to HPC, so undergrads um, don't get a lot of um, information about this field in um, in our field. Um, and even in the computer science department, there's one class in the graduate level that's uh, related to clusters. Um, so this program really helps out undergraduates and even high school students participate and learn more about uh, high performance computing. And yeah, as John mentioned, only undergraduate and high school students can participate. So um, it's a non self hour competition, So and the competition takes about a week. So. Um, it will be from Monday to Wednesday, and it will be nonstop, so we won't be able to sleep as much during that time <laughs> period. But um, all, the team can only have up to six uh, undergraduate or high school students, and they will only they only sponsor uh, one primary advisor, despite the fact that we have four. And we will be working on eight applications uh, this year. So I'm going to go over a few rules uh, for the competition, um, just the generic stuff that are relevant for this competition. Um, so non-team members, meaning the the six undergrads um, that are in the team, they're the only people who can uh, to participate in the competition. So the advisor who goes, he, they can't, he cannot help, he or she cannot help uh, with the uh, the team uh, at all. So if there's uh, some issue with turning it on, they can't contact uh, the advisor at all. The only role of the advisor is to provide them with moral support and snacks. Um, but the team can talk to their vendor partner. So for us, uh, it's Cisco. Um, so if a part breaks down, they can go to Cisco and ask for a replacement. Um, they cannot upgrade any parts um, once the competition starts. So that's another thing. And um, there's a power limitation, um, which we'll talk about why there's power limitation. And um, and only uh, on-site access to the cluster, so you can't remote SSH into it um, and get like other people helping you out. Um, and uh, some of the software rules is that teams can choose any operating system, um, which we'll talk about well, how we chose ours um, towards the end. Um, and students can also test um, and benchmark their system like well before the conference starts, so they can even write scripts to automate the entire process if they choose to. Uh, many students don't do that. Many students don't do that, um, but they're encouraged to write a scheduler to uh, run the entire thing, um, and so they can get some sleep or uh, enjoy the other parts of the conference. As for the application, we mentioned that there will be eight applications that we will be running on our cluster. Uh, the competition will start on Monday and will end on Wednesday night. So on Monday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., we will be running these three um, benchmarks uh, up here, LIMPAC, HPCG, and IO500. They only used to have LIMPAC and HPCG in the past, and they are using IO500 benchmark as an experiment this year. So if the teams can manage to run them and finish them, uh, they get point and they get full points, and the top team will get a little bit of bonus and uh, a little more information about these benchmarks. Um, LIMPAC is uh, the standard benchmark that's used to rate top 500 supercomputers in the world, um, but it uh, mainly tests the regular um, application performance, um, like floating point performance of the system. Where HPCG is more geared towards uh, real world HPC applications, more real leader type workloads like sparse matrix multiplication. Um, and the IO500, like Vera said, is a new benchmark uh, meant to test the storage performance of the systems. Once we're done with um, the benchmarks from 5 p.m. on Monday until 5 p.m. on Wednesday, the, comp the non-stop 48 hour uh, competition starts. And these are the applications that we will be running uh, on our, or we will be working on. The first one, which I'm currently uh, studying and working on, is the reproducibility challenge. 
So the teams are uh, given a published and peer-reviewed paper, and they're required to uh, re replicate the same exact results from that paper uh, with their uh, given architecture. Um, obviously, the paper has a lot of information and technical knowledge that we are not familiar with. So obviously, students are not expected to understand every single detail of the paper, but just getting it uh, to running and applying a few optimization techniques is more than enough in this competition. And the second application is called WebPIC, Bacteria Particle and Cell, which is used to model chemical plasmas in multiple dimensions. Um, and we have a software computer engineering student working on this. SSD uh, is a way to simulate supercomputing systems using parallelism and since this application cannot be CUDA accelerated, we have decided to use cloud resources. So at the conference, we'll be given five we'll be given five hundred dollars to use on any application. So and we thought that since we cannot CUDA accelerate this application, it would be better to use all the cloud money on this. And as for the fourth application. We don't know. It's called mystery application. Until we get to a conference in Denver in November, we just won't know. So we literally have 48 hours for that application you know, to understand, to run, or just to be able to get it to running. And the last one is called the power shutoff activity. So this one has a little bit of history to it. In 2007, which was the first time that they came up with the SEC program. So what happened is, they had a, about six or seven teams, and um, obviously the, they did not have a power limitation back in the day. So what happened is teams drew too much power to the convention center <laughs> to the point where uh, the convention center went dark. I don't know if you remember, Rich. So, um, so they decided to put that power limit there, and they decided to turn that into an activity, and they were like, hey, Let's make use of this and uh, expose undergraduate students to real-world problems that they might be facing in the HPC field. So that's um, the history behind it. And what's going to happen is, within that 48-hour period, after we are done with the benchmarks, they will cut the power once, doing that at least once uh, throughout that 48-hour 48 48-hour 48 period. But we just don't know when, so that's why. Um, we always need people um, around our cluster area so that we know when that is, or would at least have people to get it back and up and running. So, so I'm gonna talk about some of the hardware that we are kind of finalizing now. Um, we decided to go with the two compute node system, um, each with four NVIDIA V100 GPUs and four Xeons um, in each node, and Together, they'll have a lot of memory and a lot of storage. And we're going to use uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet, um, RDMA over converged Ethernet, over um, instead of using InfiniBand, mainly because of budget constraints. Um, we only have one uh, vendor partner this year. Um, it's our first year, and we try we tried to get another uh, vendor, but that didn't uh, end up happening this year. Uh, so we end up going with this. Um, and another reason is that um, Cisco will also be using this uh, cluster that we make for their own stuff uh, later after the competition. So they have their own uh, agendas with this hardware. Uh, we considered a few other options um, using a four compute node system um, or even that one scheduler and two compute nodes. Um, but we chose not to go with that uh, because we didn't have the interconnect necessary to um, properly take use of that. Um, and finally, we even considered using one compute node or basically like a really powerful workstation with eight V100s. Uh, the main advantage with this is that like, Cisco is able to um, introduce NVLink uh, between the GPUs uh, to increase the bandwidth in the GPU communication. Um, but the communication between the GPUs and CPUs is still um, limited by PCIe bandwidth because it's x86 architecture. Um, the main thing with this is that it's optimized with, for ML. They, mar they market this uh, type of configuration for machine learning stuff. And it's focused mainly for GPU workloads. Um, but not all the applications in SCC is GPU focused. Yeah, for example, SSD. And even if uh, we might be running it on the cloud, 
Uh, we still have the mystery application. Maybe uh, it might be better to use the cloud resources for that application. And because of the fact that we don't know which one we will be using it for, we um, decided not to go with that. Yes. I, I had a question about the mystery application. Do I, I can just shout out the group? I'm just curious, what are some kinds of mystery applications you've had in the past, and how have you had to, how do people respond to them? You can uh, just repeat the question if you want to. For the record. For the recording, the question is, what kind of mystery applications have you have been seen in the past? So what they usually do is, um, from previous year, previous com uh, competition, uh, SCC programs, um, they try to pick like one of the previous year's applications, but that's not guaranteed. Right, so, and they don't release the mystery applications on the official website, so we don't really know. Our assumption is either it will be a big data application or one of the previous applications that they um, assign. So, uh, tying everything back to this, uh, this event, uh, why CentOS? One of the reasons why we really wanted to use CentOS is because uh, NC State, like all their servers and their um, a lot of their workstations use Red Hat Linux, and CentOS is the open source version of Red Hat Linux, right? So we thought that the students would be more familiar with the operating system, which is why we went with the um, with this operating system. The issue is that the vendor partner that we were working with, they wanted us to look at other operating systems as well, mainly because uh, the they have up, more up-to-date uh, kernel and drivers, um, meaning that like Red Hat just released uh, Red Hat 8, um, and CentOS uh, still is working on releasing the newer um, operating system to mirror that. And uh, they believe that with using another operating system, um, we can take use of the newer software versions. Um, but we also looked at the distribution of the students' uh, teams that are using CentOS in, for the past years, and we saw that more and more teams are using CentOS on their clusters. Um, albeit the team last year that won the competition was using Debian, um, I believe that reason for that is that they made their own op uh, modifications to the kernel to take advantage of some of their hardware features that they had. Um, but for us, we are trying to focus on how much time we have left to the competition. We still haven't built the cluster, actually. Um, the hardware is... It's, a, it's actually in town, but uh, most of the team members are out of town. So we'll be building the cluster this Monday, and I'm hoping to get it to running by the end of the week so that we can actually start running the applications and applying some optimize, optimization <coughs> techniques before then. Right, so the conference is in, uh, is in three months. Yeah. So we're trying to like look at, try to balance this with our uh, other uh, coursework you guys have to take um, and see how much stuff we can like do easier than, because if we use another, uh, we, we could just update the kernel on CentOS and reinstall all the packages, but we saw that like that might take too much time. Um, and we also saw that the OpenHPC package is available in CentOS, um, but our vendor partner Cisco suggested that it might have some bloatware that we don't really need for the competition. Um, so we're still working through stuff with them, and we'd be happy to like take any advice or suggestions that you guys have for us. Um, that's our last technical slide, um, and this is our contact information. Um, feel free to contact any of us if you have any questions or suggestions, um, and mainly like me, uh, John, or Vera, because we are presenting today. Um, but that's it. Any questions? Anyone? <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks.